Hi, I'm Jessica, and today I'll be teaching you how to make and dispense anaerobic media on the bench top. Of course, the most important part of making anaerobic media is getting out all the oxygen. To do this, we will be boiling and reducing our media. Because of this, we have to take special safety precautions, much like you would normally in the lab, and we're going to be wearing our safety goggles, pulling all of your hair back, and wearing a lab coat to protect yourself from any sorts of boil overs or burns that might occur. Making anaerobic media is very similar to making aerobic media when you're first starting out. We're going to have a minerals, metals, and vitamins that we're going to add in. In our lab, we like to keep larger stock solutions of these so that our media can be consistent from one experiment to the next. So I'm going to add these into our water, and I have 10% more water in there than the recipe calls for so that we'll have extra whenever we boil. I'm also going to be adding an indicator called rosazurin, which as you can see starts out blue. And this will help us tell the pH of our media and later on whether or not if we have any oxygen contamination. This media will be pink at an acidic pH, blue at a neutral pH, and a darker blue, if not sometimes cloudy, under basic pH. Now that your media is ready and ph you'll place a sterile gassing probe into the top of it with nitrogen CO2 flowing into the um, flask. While you're boiling this, you want to make sure that it's pointed away from your face or anyone else's and gently swirl it to make sure you get even heating on the bottom. If you don't heat evenly, the glass can crack and break. If you think you hear the glass cracking or breaking, slowly put it down and back away from it as to not burn yourself. While the media is cooling down, this is a good time to get out your tubes and your stoppers. Sometimes the stoppers don't quite fit right into every tube, so we take a small amount of, of vacuum grease and apply it just around the bottom of the stopper. You want to use a very small amount because if you use too much, the stoppers will pop right back out of your tubes. Now that your media is cooled back to room temp, we'll add our sodium bicarbonate. This is the buffer that we use in this particular media. You'll get it to dissolve by swirling it around. And if there's any stuck to the sides, we'll remove that right before we dispense our media. Now we want to move from one anoxic environment to another, so we'll take a second gassing probe and put it into our tube. Now since we've got our two anoxic environments, we want to make sure that our pipette has as little oxygen as possible in it, so you will um, grab up some of the gas phase first, and then expel that, and then start to grab up the media. If you need to rinse down the sides, this would be a good time to do it. And now we'll dispense into the tube. When you go to stopper, you want to make sure that you don't pull out the probe before you get the stopper in place. So you'll carefully pull out the probe while pushing in the stopper like that. To do a larger amount, such as a serum bottle, you may have to transfer the liquid in twice. So you do this the same way, making two anoxic environments and you just transfer with your pipette. And now you'll stop it the same way, making sure you pull the gassing probe out as you're pushing in the stopper. Oop. 
Now that you've got your media dispensed, we'll want to seal it with aluminum seals. We do this for two reasons. One, so that the stopper doesn't pop out while you're autoclaving. And secondly, because some of these cultures will later on be under pressure and your stopper will pop out again. You want to make sure you get a good even seal and that it is actually crimped all the way down. Now you're going to want to reduce your media. We'll start by flushing out your syringe. You can use either nitrogen or nitrogen CO2. And you'll flush it out five or six times. Now you'll immediately go into your reductant tube, sulfide in this case, and we'll pull out 0.2 mils for these tubes. Okay, and then you'll immediately go into your tube that needs to be reduced. And then throw away your needle into the proper disposal. Let me show you this again. So we are flushing out our syringe, and this time I'll do it with the bottle. You'll grab your sulfide. We're going to pull out more this time. Make sure you pull it out by the needle, otherwise the needle can separate. And we'll inject this into our bottle. Now that you've reduced your media, it should go from blue to pink to clear. Now, after you autoclave them, all of your tubes should be clear. If they are still pink, this means that either you have oxygen contamination or your media is too acidic. Now that your media is made, it's ready to autoclave.